Hello everybody. I know this this video is going to be a little out of the ordinary for what I usually do. It's definitely going to be a longer video, a much longer video than what I usually put out. But I keep feeling led by the Holy Spirit to do an overview of Romans chapter 2. Pretty much I'm just going to read Romans chapter 2. And the Holy Spirit's going to speak through me, work in and through me, and I'm praying that the Holy Spirit gets this video to the right person at the right time. So, Romans chapter 2, starting verse 1. You, therefore, have no excuse, you who pass judgment on someone else, for at whatever point you judge another, you are condemning yourself, because you who pass judgment do the same things. That verse reminded me of another verse that's in the Bible. Why do you worry about the speck in your brother's eye when you have a plank in yours? There's a stereotype about Christians, about how Christians are not supposed to be judgmental or we're not supposed to judge. That is incorrect. Christians can judge, but... But you need to consider, if you are a Christian and you are going to judge, there is a right way and a wrong way to go about it. This first verse, lining up with another verse in the Bible, basically says, if you are going to judge, do not be a hypocrite about it. You can't just say, hey, that's a sin. You need to repent. You're going to hell. You can't just say that. Basically... Pull the person aside and say, hey, what you're doing is wrong. Basically, pull the person aside. Don't be a jerk about it. Don't make a big scene about it. Verse 2. Now we know that God's judgment against those who do such things is based on truth. So when you, a mere human a mere human being, pass judgment on them and you do the same things, you do, do you think that you will escape God's judgment, or do you show contempt for the riches of his kindness, forbearance, and patience, not realizing that God's kindness is intended to lead you to repentance? Something that I'm sure a lot of other Christians will say the same thing. There are a lot of times where God's working in my life, and I do not understand what's happening at the moment. And then at some point later on in the future, I'm, lo I'm looking back thinking, oh, okay, God, so that's why that had to happen. Thank you. Verse 5, But because your stubbornness and your unrepentant heart, you are storing up wrath against yourself for the day of God's wrath when his, ju when his righteous judgment will be revealed. God will repay each person according to what they have done. To those who by persistence in doing good seek glory, honor, and immortality, he will give eternal life. You also need to consider that you shouldn't do good things in your own strength. There's a misconception out there that if you're just a good person alone, you're going to heaven. Imagine this analogy. Imagine you live down the road from somebody who's rich. They got everything that the world says you could ever want. More money than they know what to do with. Big house, three-car garage, a boat, a pool, white picket fence, the American dream, all that and more. All, everything that the world says they need. But you and that person don't know each other. But you decide to go down the road and knock on their door anyway. When they answer the door, you end up saying, Hey, I'm moving in here just because I'm a good person. How do you think that's going to go? It's the same concept with Jesus Christ. If you think you can get into heaven just by being a good person alone and want nothing to do with Jesus Christ while you're being a good person, doing things in your own strength instead of allowing God to help you out through his Holy Spirit, how do you think that's going to go? So where was I? Verse 6. 
But for those who are self-seeking and who reject the truth and follow evil, there will be wrath and anger. There will be trouble and distress for every human being who does evil, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile. But glory and honor and peace for everyone who does good, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile. For God does not show favoritism. That goes back to a point I was making earlier. A lot of times... Things happen, you don't understand why they're happening, but God never allows anything to happen without a reason. Verse 12, all, those, all who sin apart from the law will also perish apart from the law, and all who sin under the law will be judged by the law. For it is not, it is not those who hear the law who are righteous in God's sight, but it is those who obey the law who will be declared righteous. If, you ju if you're just a hearer of the word, if you just have this outwardly appearance of, I'm a Christian, just that outwardly appearance, but you don't have that internal change, you don't have that repentant heart, you don't have that renewed mind, and then you just have this mask on, basically you're just a Pharisee. And also, when it comes to obeying the law, Jesus did not come to do away with the law. He came to fulfill the law. Jesus Christ himself said that the two greatest commands are love the Lord your God above all else and love your neighbor as yourself. Now, loving your neighbor as yourself, that goes back to the Ten Commandments. Look at the Ten Commandments. That would be in Exodus chapter 20. Now, in that context, neighbor doesn't always mean someone who just happens to live next to you. It, neighbor, in that context, could mean the person you see walking on the sidewalk, person walking their dog, someone driving by you on the highway, that cashier at the store you go to, even that guy at the gym that always hogs all the equipment. Literally anybody could be your neighbor in that context. But if you love your neighbor as yourself, then like it says in the Ten Commandments, you're not going to steal, you're not going to covet what your neighbor has. Coveting what your neighbor has is basically being jealous of what they have. If you love your neighbor as yourself, you're not going to commit adultery, you're not going to steal, you're not going to lie. So anyway, verse 14. Indeed, when Gentiles who do not have the law do by nature things required by the law. They are a law for themselves, even though they do not have the law. They show, they show that the requirements of the law are written on their hearts, their consciousness also bearing witness, and their thoughts sometimes accusing them, and at other times even defending them. At least some people, anyway, have this internal sense of right and wrong, or at least a desire to figure out what is right and wrong. Okay, verse 16. This will take place on the day when God's, God judges people's secrets through Jesus Christ, as my gospel declares. Now, the word there that stood out to me was secrets. Now, you could fool every other human being, but God knows everything. You can't fool God. Verse 17. Now you, if you call yourself a Jew, if you rely on the law and boast in God, if you know his will and approve of what is superior because you are instructed by the law, if you are convinced that you are a guide for the blind, a light for those who are in the dark, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of little children, because you have in the law the embodiment of knowledge and truth. You then who teach others, do you not teach yourself? You who preach against stealing, do you steal? You who say that people should not commit adultery, do you commit adultery? You who abhor idols, do you rob temples? You who boast in the law, do you dishonor God by breaking the law? As it is written, God's name is blasphemed among Gentiles because of you. Now, that goes back to verse 1 of the same chapter, the point I was talking about earlier. 
basically, if you say or try to act like you're this, you're a Christian, but you're living for the world, people will notice that. People will notice that hypocrisy if that's what you're doing. And I'm sure there's a lot of people out there in the world that have turned away from Jesus Christ or wanted nothing to do with Jesus Christ from the get-go because they see people who claim to be Christian but then live however they want. And Jesus Christ himself has repeatedly throughout Scripture spoke against Pharisees and people who claim to be Christian but live however they want, they may as well be Pharisees. I don't want to show the label in case there's some copyright ban. But anyway, this is a Fit Aid. Basically, it's a drink that's really good for muscle recovery after a workout. I'm still at the gym right now. Okay, where was I? Verse 25. Circumcision has value if you observe the law, but if you break the law, you have become as though you had not been circumcised. So then, if those who are not circumcised keep the law's requirements, will they not be regarded as though they were circumcised? The one who is not circumcised physically and yet obeys the law will condemn you, even though you have the written code and circumcision are a lawbreaker. A person who is not a Jew is the only one outwardly, nor is circumcision merely outward and physical. No, a person is a Jew who is one inwardly, and circumcision is circumcision of the heart, by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Not by the written code. Such a person's such a person's praise is not from other people, but from God. And that can be a trick that can be tricky business getting into that. See, if you're trying to win the approval of human beings alone while not for while forsaking the approval of God, the Creator, then basically that's another way of being a Pharisee, trying to do things in your own th own strength, only having that outward appearance, that mask, but being dead in spirit inside. See, we need to have a repentant heart, a renewed heart, and a renewed mind. We can't have one or the other. If we have a renewed heart or a renewed mind, but one is focused on the world, one's going to be focused on the world, the other's going to be focused on God, and that's going to tear you apart spiritually, maybe to a certain degree in the natural, in the world. I once heard Bill Johnson say that the renewed heart is like a river of living water that is provided by Jesus Christ, but it's the renewed mind that is like the banks of the river guiding where that river goes. So anyway, that's going to do it for this video. I don't know if I'm going to do any videos like this again. If I do, I don't know at what frequency. But I'm praying that the Holy Spirit gets this video to the right person at the right time. God bless.